What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Undungeon. This is one of those titles that I played it about a year ago, I don't remember. I have the demo still installed on my hard drive from the original one that they sent me a long time ago, but it's been synced up with the new demo, and so I wasn't able to check and actually see the last time I checked this out, but I'm pretty sure it was like early early 2020. And Undungeon was one of those games that I think was very slick, and it was very, very high on art value, but my initial impressions of the demo were that the combat felt a little bit clunky and it needed to be sped up. Well, I've dove on into the new demo, which is available right now on the Steam Festival, and I'm happy to say that they've actually... There's been a lot of improvement in this game over the last year. It appears as though the developers really knew where the weak points in the game were and have been working on it fairly tirelessly because I went back in and did a little test play on my old save, and it felt pretty good, actually. So if you've never seen Undungeon before, this is one of those games that has, like, that peerless pixel art that just makes you drink in the screen. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, Swords and Sorcery Super Brothers or, like... Children of Morta, or any of those games. It's one of those games where the first thing that's going to pop out to you is absolutely the pixel art, where you're like, wow, this is a really, really good-looking game. And so, anyways, it's a game where I'm not exactly sure what the storyline is. This is a weird one. Uh, this is one of those games that goes all in on making, like, a really weird universe, a la Aeon Flux or, like, Warframe, where it's just, like, really odd and strange, and you're not entirely sure exactly what's going on, but you keep stacking more loot and equipping yourself, because, like, eh, it's fun. Uh, as I understand it, we are a messenger of the gods, and, like, the timeline of the universe has been, like, ruptured, and we are put into kind of an open-world action RPG setting where we are effectively the Grim Reaper come to fix everything by whacking the right people, getting the right relics, and setting the timeline back in motion. So anyways, Undungeon. We're gonna dive on in today and take a look at it. If after watching this you wanted to play the game for yourself up until the 7th, it will be available on the Steam Festival. Aside from that, you can also find links down below to all my various social media where you're more than welcome to join me. Twitch, Twitter, Discord, all that fun stuff. But let's dive on in because we've only got 30 minutes to kill and I don't want to waste it all jibber-jabbering. Uh, we are playing as the Void. It looks like later on we actually have access to a new character, uh, but that character, it, I don't know if you have to beat the game or what you're going to have to do in order to play as like the alternate character. I also don't know if he's going to come with his own storyline. This game does seem to be pretty narrative dense. Uh, which is actually kind of rare for, like, an action RPG type game. Normally those are like, go over here, kill this guy, get the loot. Uh, this game, very, very narrative heavy. In fact, what it kind of reminds me of is Death Trash, where it's very much an action RPG, but it's also got, like, open world elements, and it's got some other things going on that make it more than the sum of its parts, I would think. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can delete the profile. It's all good. My feewees will not be hurt. Strange, isn't it? From childhood, we have been told that the universe is endless. It was said that there are millions of worlds out there, and that none of them can be reached. They said that they were thousands of light years away from us. But, what if this is not the whole truth? What if we live in a multiverse where a thin membrane separates worlds from each other. And this membrane is not as strong as it seems. Seven worlds, seven variations of Earth were instantly merged. Those few who survived called this cataclysm the Shift. See, that's probably why I didn't know what was going on right there is because I just jumped into my old save and I missed out on that cinematic right there because now it instantaneously makes sense what happened. Uh, Earth has been turned into a giant bubblegum ball of reality. Sure, dude, let's be born. I mean, I've, I've, always, I've always thought that being born is like a terrible, terrible mistake. Like, nobody, nobody ever warned me what was to come when I was born, you know what I mean? But fair enough, he looks like he might be made of sterner stuff than I. The space is dark and silent. A voice resounds in your head, breaking up this silence. Each word like a supersonic cannon shot. I made you. I created you. Yeah, well, what are you? I am nothingness, just like you. 
They call us the Void. You and I are one, but you have a purpose. You can leave this place and meet with them, the envoys from the other dimensions in the center of creation. Okay. Um, where am I? One of the realms. They gave it to us as a gift. Follow the thread. I will bring you to the root of creation. To the city of all dimensions, the city of Archibon. Collect the seals of the six heralds and bring them back here. They have many realms. We have essence. They want our essence because we have so much. Let them give us their realms so that we can have many realms as well. Go and get the seals. Okay. Fair enough. He doesn't seem like he's one for small talk, so like... I could chat him up and be like, hey, bro, like, what's going on here? Like, you can, where can I get a good pizza at? But, like, I just, I don't feel like it's going to work out in a positive way. I feel like that's going to backfire on me. All right, so there's dead people laying around all over the place, emaciated corpses, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, we have a communicator, which we can now open with our control button, which will allow us to figure out exactly what we're supposed to be doing. New owner detected. Error, error, error. Oh, well, at least we were granted access, data recovery, and pro uh, yeah, do the transmission. No access to info ocean. Okay, recovering most recent story. Clear, I really don't think this is a good idea. Think about it. You should say no. Admit it, you're jealous. You're not worthy. You're going to regret that you said that. We'll talk once I return in my new form. Let's not put it off any longer. I'm behind your back. Turn around and face your death. Okay. Oh, there's a little bad guy right there. Oh, he teleported on me. So the game actually uses kind of hack and slash combat. Use Wasp to move around. Left click in order to attack like I'm doing right there. I don't want to get too close to this thing, though, because it seems like it... Yeah, I was going to say. It seems like it might be vaguely weaponized. It's okay. I comboed him down. And I, I sucked up all of his essence. So when a target dies from cutting, they drop things. But such targets cannot be opened? What do you mean by opening the target? When they die from a kill, the number of items dropped out increases and the number of organs extracted by autopsy increases. Okay, so apparently there's different ways to finish off our enemy. When they die from incineration, the chance of falling out runes increases, but such targets cannot be opened. When a target dies from tearing... You get less runes, but you get more essence. Okay, I'm going to have to kind of like... Oh, we can upgrade? Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at how do I upgrade here. It looks like we've got equipment over on this side. So we've got like claws, we've got breastplates, we've got masks. Over on this side, it looks like we've got enhancers, grenades, and knives. Over here, we've got the void dimension, which I don't think we're actively in just yet. Can I loot any of these guys? Like, are they lootable? Oh, nice, dude. Clear ribs. Okay. So apparently we just got maybe what is that right there? Hold on, let's go let's go back to our equipment. Okay, so it's actually like a chest piece. So we took the ribs of the guy that was in the transmission and we are now wearing them as a part of ourselves. Gotcha. Can we loot this body right here? No. Okay, so that body can't be looted. We've got some kind of weird orbital boob over here that wants us to teleport, so I'm just gonna do it because I've learned not to argue with games like this. All right, fair enough. I think we just went through a portal that, like, made us go through atmosphere to Earth. Ew, dude, are there, like, body parts coming out of that pillar? Hold on, I saw that. Uh, Harold, greetings. I'm Viticus. By sheer coincidence, I became the guardian of this hub, and I'm obliged to help you. The fate of the universe hangs in the balance. I apologize. Uh, where are my manners? You probably want to have a look around and get acclimated first. I've waited a very long time for this meeting, and I can wait a little longer. Just come and find me when you're ready to discuss business. All right. So we can look around the hub. This right here looks like it's a dimensional pier like the one I used to get here, but this one is larger. Those are definitely disembodied. Those are body parts sticking out of stone. That's odd. The creature's flesh blends with the stone in the pier. It seems alive but unconscious. Okay. Device resembles a locked door. And then what is this thing down here? 
A device in the center of the table shows the current state of the planes of reality. All right. Did you get a good look around? Yes, what happened to Archibon? Archibon once stood in this very spot. More precisely, the cosmically massive core of creation stood in this spot, and the six districts of the Archibon surrounded it. When you were on your way to the Council of Heralds, there were a few that knew about this, but it seems like one of them didn't want you to make it here. There was a coup in Archibon, and someone used Marduk's personal weapon. I'm not hinting at anything. Marduk's personal weapon to sever your thread from the core of creation, plunging the void dimension into the abyss and spilling its essence into the center of creation, into Archibon. Only it just so happened that your core is here, and the core of creation fell into the abyss along with your dimension, and Archibon fell too, of course, and everything else. Everything is sliding into the abyss through this hub Dharma created, slowly, gradually, like through the eye of a needle. Okay, so what happened to all the other worlds and dimensions? Core creation's fallen into the abyss and taken every layer of the universe along with it. Can't stop it. The core is already past the event horizon, but we can temporarily raise it up from the abyss and gather mass from the three divine cores. It should be enough for us to create a new reality. Okay, where do I have to go? Go to the central pier. The keeper has everything ready. The pier's gonna take you to the Q dimension. What's left of it after its time in the abyss. It's a world of arid deserts, hot during the day, cold at night. Don't expect a warm welcome from the inhabitants. They know about as much about the heralds as they do about waterfalls. And what do I need to do there? Activate all seven gravitational piers in the Q dimension. That'll transfer mass to the hub and unlock a pathway to the divine palace. All right, and then we've got to convince the dimension's god to bequeath his mass to the hub core. That's it. Okay, well, fair enough. I'd rather, like, see some gameplay here. I do, I do appreciate the crash course. You're not prepared. It was difficult for me to raise your core from the abyss. Oh, she talks. Vicious, that lazy blabbermouth. Or Viticus, that lazy blabbermouth, didn't explain it to you. This is not Archibon, Harold. Refresh your memory and your skills. You need to be prepared for battle. Eh, I'm always ready for battle. Let's go. Let's do this thing. So I can right-click to get a shield. It gives me that little yellow thing. I can left-click to attack like so. I can press R to heal myself. Sort of Soulsy style. All right, so Dimensional Pier. You've got to take me to... I'm at Foundation Pier right now, so we need to go to Alpha Pier. Okay, so here we are. Uh, things in this game are destructible. Like, if you... Let's see. You can take, like, these bushes right here, for example. And if you annihilate them, you'll pick up, like, random dried pulps. Oh, there's bad guys over here. Hold on. We've got work to do. I'm going to put up a shield real fast. Just in case I get love tapped. Oh, there was a thingy right there. I didn't even see him. He was hiding in the bushes, man. He's trying to get me with some of that old guerrilla warfare, dude. All right, a primitive eye and a primitive heart. Can I equip those things? Is that stuff that I can actually, like... Oh, yeah. So, we've got, like, body parts and stuff, too, that we can, like, assemble for ourselves. We also have a level up over here. Okay. So I can unlock a slot? Okay. I don't know what each direction does. Yeah, let's unlock a slot, I guess. So if we get enough essence, we can unlock. So we've got our core. We've got our body. So we actually get to assemble ourselves from different stuff. And then we've also got our exterior kind of armor and weapons. So this is definitely going like in a Planescape Torment type direction where it's just like odd all the way through. But frankly, I sort of dig that, dude. I would rather have a game that kind of shoots for a moonshot and making like a really weird world with a really weird assembly of just like stuff for the player to do than play like another bog standard kind of, you know, Western European medieval RPG. Uh, so we've got to ask a huntsman where the core is. Okay. So this is the world map. We can actually travel on it like so. And we just kind of move around, and there are days, so your quests are going to have kind of a limited duration to them when you take them from any of the NPCs. Like, you got to get them done in a timely fashion, otherwise people assume that you forgot about them, and then the quest is just kind of behind you. Uh, Huntsman, you around here, dude? Hunty man. Hunty man, where you at? He's the hunty man with the hunty plan. Oh, mother of my boys, I can't tell if you're real or not. What are you? I'm real. Hang on, you're a herald, aren't you? An immortal messenger of the gods. I need your help. Please, whatever god you serve, you gotta help me. I'll help you with everything you need. Okay. Recently, the animals we hunt got aggressive. We spotted red vinegar runes, and then we've got more heavily armored than normal and could spit acid. Some of the red ones are even gigantic. I've never seen anything like it. They came up from under the ground, awakened by the vibrations. What vibrations? 
You don't hear them? I can hear them right now and they drive me crazy at night. I figured out where they're coming from. It's a big shiny core in the desert that I'd never seen before. It's given off those vibrations, which I followed to find it. Where is that? He marks the core on your map. When I saw it, the legends about the heralds, the messengers, the gods were the first thing that came to mind. How you appear when the world is about to change or its time has come. Got it. The story. Right. Well, we don't have the right weapons to fight things like this, especially the big ones. We haven't figured out any tactics for it, so we did our best to avoid the red ones, especially the warriors. But that night, we decided to ambush one and fight it to see what we could do. My students have been asking me about it for a long time, and I, the fool that I am, finally agreed and planned the hunt. Okay, get to the point. Uh, the meta storm is winding down. It's going to get hot on the surface soon. The wrinkles on our necks and chest will be irritated even at night. I'm wounded. I need healing, ammo, supplies, but I'm afraid the younglings aren't going to last. Okay, can you find them and bring them back to the camp? What will you give me in return? I don't know what this poor craftsman could possibly do for a herald, unless you have land that needs care and an experienced huntsman. I also know how to make a few items for hunting and combat. We'll see what I can do. All right, let's go track down the, the young ones. Oh, he gave me a bunch of supplies. Nice. Let me take a look at this stuff and figure out what it does. Uh, it looks like he just gave me a bunch of items that can be vendored, in all honesty. That's what the description says to just about all of it. It says it can be sold to merchants, so, like, fair enough, I guess? It looks like... So there's, like, little X's on the map. It looks like maybe there's something over there. Are those, like, treasures? Let's go look. Yeah, it looks like they're hidden objects, maybe. Uh, so there's like a claw, so there's throwing knives. Okay. Oh, there's Mark II claws. Nice, dude. We got even better battle claws than we previously had. So we've got some kind of throwing weapon that takes out enemies, like a knife or like a javelin or a spear or something like that. Looks like, oh, I can actually like steal their dinner too. That seems like kind of a dick move considering like, it seems plausible that like I'm an immortal, right? Oh, a jar of essence. Nice. It seems as though I am an immortal. So, like, what do I need all their valuables for? You'd think I'd be above that since I'm basically the manifestation of the universe sent to do its bidding. Like, it would just seem to me that we'd be, we'd be above those kinds of concerns. So the trapped hunters are over here in Goover Canyon. Okay, well, let's go see if we can rescue them. I'm sort of wondering if there's any difference on the maps between night and day. Like, does it affect the creature behaviors? Does it affect what animals spawn if you attack a location during the night versus during the day? Like, I, I am curious to find out these things. All right, so we've got a couple of Scorpos over here. I'm going to wipe this dude out. Oh, my God, I've been shot. Okay. I'm going to put my shield up just in case it happens again. I got to get some stamina back, though. All right. There we go. Let's jump in. I like to kind of just, like, give them a couple love taps, jump out. That tends to be... Ow, dude. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, this guy's got to go. These little shootery guys are just introducing chaos to my fight that I don't feel like dealing with right now. Oh, I got no energy. I got no energy. Oh, there's so many. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, let's put our shield back up. If I throw a knife out there... Actually, the knife seems to do a lot of damage. Okay, that guy's down. I don't know if it auto-equipped my claws, my new ones anyways. I should probably see if I can equip those. Well, ate that one to the face. Uh, the combat does feel a lot better. One of the things I remember from the previous demo being really disappointed about was that the combat felt very, very uh, clunky. And with an action RPG, you really want to seek out a certain level of fluidity when it comes to the mechanical, you know, arbitrations of the combat system. And so anyways, they've worked on that. I can say emphatically, the combat feels a lot better than it did the last time I played the game. Like, worlds different, actually. It actually feels really, really good now. And so I'm glad that they worked on that, and they really tightened it up. Let's see. We've got 100 essence right there. How do I use it, though? Oh, so we got to double-click it, and that puts it on our inventory bar, and then we just use it right there. Ah, gotcha. So that gave me, like, a level up. Sweet, dude. Well, I've got enough to upgrade my core again, and we've got a rune, so that gives me minimum damage, and it gives me knife damage. And it looks like it goes into those slots right there. Sweet. Does it... I don't know if it matters, actually. Like, it seems like we can put anything, like, kind of anywhere. Maybe I should have bought one of the side slots just to find out. I don't know. I've equipped my new claws, and they did increase our damage by about 15. Uh, if you wanted to take a look at what that looks like, it actually does update all of this on the side, this synopsis right here that it gives you, uh, in a very Diablo-esque fashion. I like that a lot. 
Um, I love it when when games sort of have a synopsis of the benefits and detractions you're getting based on the items that you're equipping. I always really, really appreciate that being included. Uh, because it's always, I, I don't know, dude, I don't find it satisfying to look at a sterile list of, like, numbers. And, like, yeah, dude, you can tell me on the item that this one does 36 DPS, and this one does 42 DPS. Oh, man. Okay, you guys need to die. There we go. I don't know if I get my knives back from doing all this. Looks like he's bleeding in some respect. Uh, yeah, let's wipe you guys out. Let me get my shield back up just in case I eat a projectile from off screen. It does look like we're picking up like lots of goodies around here. That has a sword on it, which makes me think it's going to make me attack more better. Okay, you fire your shot. I'm going to go after your boy right here, though. It looks like we do indeed get our... Well, it looks like we get some of our weapons back when we throw them. Okay, so like it must be like chance-based to recover like your spears or whatever else. I do like that the enemies have clear reads, and so it's very, very obvious when they're going to attack. I also appreciate the fact that they don't have damage on touch, which you guys will know I talk about all the time. I, I, I personally feel as though if enemies are not made out of acid or spikes or like razors or something like that, they should not have damage on touch. They should have to do like an attack animation, which gives the player a chance to retaliate and dodge. Just the way that I feel about it, it's one of my large pet peeves in gaming is I just cannot stand damage on touch for enemies that like logically should not deal damage when you touch them. What is that thing? Oh, money. Nice. So we got eight bronze coins. Cool. So that sort of implies, along with the items that we've picked up along the way, that there are going to be vendors and sort of like buying and selling mechanics for our character as well. One would think that since we're a messenger of the gods, we could just demand things of people and they would just flat out give it to us, but maybe it don't work like that. Oh, look, mommy and daddy are here to protect the little ones. It's okay because I'm going to rip out your gland and your heart with my bear claws. Okay, they're not bear claws. They're some kind of weird vulture eagle claws. But you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, we've got dried pulp right there. Hey, are these our hunty boys right here? These have got to be our hunty boys, dude. Okay, hunty boys. You see two beings. One takes a step in your direction covering their partner. Dark scarlet patches on the being's red robe shimmer in the sun. Blood. The being looks at you intently and waves his hand in an unusual gesture. Ayen sent me. So you're not an enemy. Thank the gods. You look like a herald, and you have a core. Are you one of them? Yep. Greetings, herald. I'm Rune. That's Zomita. We were wounded on a hunt, and we're not strong enough to get past the beasts. Forgive me for asking a one-sided favor of you, but could you get us out? Yeah, I'll lead you out. That's fine. Ooh, it's an escort quest. That'll be fun. Everybody loves an escort quest because everybody knows the escort's the best. Gonna take this escort to the west. Gonna take them out of a scorpion nest. Ooh, yeah. All right. Well, there's our improvised song for the day, in case you were wondering where that was at. Like, I'll, oh, they're gonna help out with the fight, too. Nice. Okay. Yeah, let him do what he's gonna... I should really put up a shield. See? And I put up the shield just in time. I'm gonna hit him with a javelin real quick. Oh, he's trying to shoot at me. Oh, that guy's trying to fight him with his hands. I think my little homeboys are actually doing a better job than ow, ow, ow. Oh my god, that's like my entire health meter, dude. Wow, that thing was tough. Alright, let me get some health back. Oh, that was not very much health. Oh, did he just try to heal me? I think he tried to heal me. Okay. Well, one of our boys is down, so oh my god, he just healed me with the healing waters of life. One would think that sort of the essence of death would not need healing, but, like, I'm not going to question it too aggressively. Uh, so that guy's dead. I don't think he's coming back. I think he's uh, super gone. I'm kind of wondering if there's going to be consequences for the fact that I let one of them die. Oof, okay, almost got me. Almost got me. I saw that. Oh, I got no energy left. Hold on. Oh, he's getting smacked now, too. Okay, I got to get into the middle of this stuff. Uh, let's try to throw some stuff at these guys and get rid of the shooters so that we can protect Rune. And then if I can, I'm just going to hack and slash my way through this group. I do think that it was a good idea that they put that very, very tasteful. Oh, see, if he had thrown the healing water sooner, his friend might be alive. It's not my fault. It's his fault. Yeah. All right, let's take these guys over here. 
A way out of this hell. Thank you, Harold. I'll get to the camp on my own from here, and I will never forget your kindness. We put a lot of stock in good deeds, and you'll always be welcome among us. My home is your home. You already know where to find our camp. Ayen will already know, or Ayen will be glad to see you, and all of Madzenta will know of you soon. Okay, so all of your actions have karma. Okay, so we have positive and negative reputation as well. I am a little bit curious. Are there, like, more of them around here? There's, like, a crystal or something on the ground right here. And it sort of feels like I should be able to pick it up, but, like, it doesn't let me pick it up. So I'm kind of wondering if I get, like, a resurrection ability or something later on that allows me to bring people back. I don't know. Uh, we do have more things to slot in, so that'll give me armor piercing and damage. I think we could definitely use that. And then another agility rune. Oh, I see. They're color-coded. Okay. So you have just general runes. You have offense runes over here. Oh, okay. And then you have defense runes, like possibly over here. We do get hit like a truck, and so defense runes might be worth kind of chasing down and figuring out if they're going to be worthwhile. However, thus far, I do kind of like the leveling system and how you have that little grid over there that you get to work on. I'm kind of wondering if the little channel in between the rune slots means that you can augment runes, basically. So there's going to be some runes that are like, oh, gives you fire damage. And then, like, another rune will have the ability to augment that and be like, increases the efficacy of the attached rune by, like, 4%, you know? Uh, it looks like we've got a few more hunters over here, so we might as well go ahead and get that done. This will also give us a nice opportunity to see if things are different at night, because I did want to plot that out and find out if that's something that's going to be, like, relevant to the overall gameplay. Like, are the enemies going to be stronger? Or are they going to be different? Like, what's going to be around here? I'm guessing that our hunters are over here to the left. There's also a hidden treasure right here. There we go. I don't know if they need to mark the treasures on the map. I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, so we've got Tekka Gloves. These gloves are slower than Battle Claws, but they hit harder. They have a two-hit combo. Okay. And then we have Bombs, too. And then there's another rune right there. I'm going to kind of dip out of the way before I get hit by that. I don't feel like I hit that much harder. We've increased our damage by, like, 20 or 30, which, for all intents and purposes, should be kind of like a 30% a increase. Maybe we'll feel it a little bit more once we get a little further on in. Uh, I'm going to get back so he doesn't have line of sight. We'll throw something at him. Yeah, projectiles, baby. Oh, my God. Okay, give me a shield. I have no energy left, so i got to fall back for a minute. We're going to kind of, like, pace these guys out as far as we can. And then just kind of try to pick one off here and there. There's so many guys that are firing range that I might be falling for a ruse here by fighting the melee that's out in front. I'm going to throw something back. How about that? Oh, it looks like I can charge it up to get, like, a crit, too. Okay. They're kind of, like, tightly wound. I'm sort of wondering if I can get them with a bomb. Well, I got one of them. It's better than nothing. Yeah, let me get my shurikens back real fast, dude. I need my ninja stars. Okay, that was a sketchy fight right there, dude. That was, like, a little bit dubious. That was actually probably a tough one. Like, that was a lot of enemies all in the span of, like, a really small area with lots of range support backing up, like, melee support. All right, let's back up off these guys. I feel like it's fairly principally important. Ooh, best bomb ever thrown. Unfortunately, you can't recover bombs like you can your throwing knives, but still, I do feel as though the throwing knives are, like, pivotally important for surviving. I'm not really paying too much attention to, like, the different damage types to, like, maximize my loot or do, like, anything intelligent with my strikes. But I am really, really happy with the way the combat feels now. From my recollection, and I could be totally wrong about this, the things that I can feel the change in is I feel like they made the main character move faster so he's no longer as lumpy as he used to be. He used to kind of lumber. He used to be like ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. Now it feels like he moves much like swifter and they just kind of sped up the animation. They also added like a little bit of a smear effect when you rotate the character from one side to the other that adds to the fluidity of the experience. And then from there, you don't feel as committed to the attacks. Uh, you can actually, so like, 
I don't recall, but some games, there's two different schools of thought when it comes to attack design. Like, some games allow you to break your animation, like that right there, where you can cancel an attack by dodging out of it. And some games make you do the entire attack when you click, and then there's like a cooldown before you can dodge. I'm a fan of the former school, and it seems like that's what they've implemented here, and I think that was a smart decision. Now, I might be biased because that's what I like, but I've always, li I've always felt like it increases the skill ceiling when you can break animations. That's always been kind of my... like. I, I think that if you can't break the animations, it makes the combat more of a thinking man's game. But if you can break the animations, it makes it more of a reflex man's game, I guess. And, and so, like, I guess it depends what you prefer. I prefer things to feel much more visceral and aggressive and fast. And so I like the former school. That's just me. These guys heal themselves. Oh, almost got me. Oh, we get limited iframes while we're dodging. I didn't even realize. I just thought we had to be the hell out of the way. I just don't want this guy to dive beneath the surface and get all his health back, in all honesty. Wow, there's a lot of enemies out here. I'm liking this enemy density, though. Okay. Oh, there's another one of those crystal things right there. I want, I want to know what those are. Like, I keep seeing them drop off of enemies, and all I can assume is that maybe we don't have the receptacle or something or the supplementary item yet that's necessary in order for you to maybe siphon them up or loot them? I don't really know. Got another treasure chest over here. What you got for me, baby? Uh, money. Okay. Take that. Some gunpowder. Oh, I'm kind of wondering if there's pistols and stuff now, if there's gunpowder available. I mean, we definitely did see the hunters previously. We saw them firing guns at the enemies, so I assume that there's guns around we can pick up. Look at that dried pulp right there. Did we ever find the hunters? I'm going to check this little corner over here. I remember those needles from the last time I played their demo. Uh, the needles. Hey, you see two beings. Nice. We will copy the gesture. And then... Oh, he gave me a gift. Nice. Sorry, we got like a lot of dialogue. Um, how's your equipment? We have a few bullets left. Okay, let's give them food, let's give them health, let's give them damage, and more damage. Okay, um, yeah, I'll show you the way out, let's rescue these little guys. Last time this turned into a pretty sticky fight though. Yeah, and it looks like it is indeed going to turn into a sticky fight again. Uh, I'm just going to spam shurikens into the fight. There we go. Oh, the projectiles have impact. Did you see that right there? Uh, so, I don't know if you caught that in the heat of the moment, but my projectile and the scorpion's projectile hit each other and canceled each other out uh, like fireballs in Street Fighter. That's kind of cool. That's actually an interesting mechanic that bullets, like the bullets can impact each other in flight. I dig that. I like that a lot. Uh, we got a long way to go though before we get these guys out of here. Oh, the needles are not nearly as good. Yeah, the needles kind of hot trash compared to... Uh... Yeah, let's get rid of you. Throw that over there. I'm just trying to keep some form of damage on this big one back here. But I don't want to get dragged too far out of my comfort zone if I can help it. You guys got any healing stuff going on? Anybody want to throw out some healing? Help the old Grim Reaper do better? No? Okay, that's fine. You don't, you know, whatever. It's your life. You don't have to help me. It's all good. Uh, let's go with maybe a defensive attachment real fast. I don't have any defensive runes. Oh, no, dude. I am a turd Ferguson. Okay, so we've got an 8 and a 7, and that's a 6. So I assume we can sell that later on. But yeah, this is Undungeon. I am really happy with the changes that they've made. Uh, I think that this demo is far and away better than their last demo. Uh, their last demo showed a lot of promise with the art style, uh, but ultimately, like, the mechanical portions were slow or kind of clunky. And, uh, you know, it, it gave me pause because they had such a cool presentation, uh, but it was backed by mechanics that were, you know, 
either not fully realized yet or implemented yet. Uh, this feels much, much better, so now I'm actually pretty excited about this. This feels like a, a good and proper action RPG if that's what you're into. Uh, so anyways, keep an eye on it. Undungeon. It's available right now on the Steam Festival. You can get the game for yourself. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie games so you don't have to. And I'll be back with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet for you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.